Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we've been doing a whole series. I think I'm just going to do this. People love it. People enjoy it. There has been a whole lot of fl a flutter out there. A flutter. I just wanted to say that. You don't hear that anymore. You should bring that back. A flutter. It means like a lot or like everywhere like that. Uh, and there's been a lot of letters. Thanks for sending your letters. Guido goes down in the mailroom every day, picks up the sack of letters and brings them up and pours them all over the letter table. And we uh, read them. Melissa and everybody, and we, Melissa and Hernandez, the Perlocopter drivers that send you the My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklaces when you subscribe, like you're doing right now. Anyways, big trade possibilities. And uh, I got an article that comes from a really good source, the Gullhorn. Uh, I really like this. Uh, publication and it brings up some really good points and possibilities for trades for the future and that is to Foley to Foley it's a good possibility that to Foley could be on his way from the Montreal Canadiens on his way out which would I imagine be very disappointing for him to a certain degree I'm sure he didn't sign that contract thinking he was going to get traded soon after but he doesn't. I do. He doesn't have a no trade clause in his contract. They Montreal signed Gorton to be not the general manager. <laughs> Just the uh, guy who operates all hockey stuff, but not the general manager. No, he's not the general manager. He's just the person that makes all the decisions to do with hockey on a hockey team. That's it. Not general manager. So anyways, they, 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 uh, they signed him up. Uh, Gordon's known for his rebuilds. That's the reason why the Rangers hired him. So pretty sure it's going to be a rebuild. So it makes sense. And we're going to take a look at that, and we're going to look at five teams. That may be going to Foley may go to, who they might get back, uh, who would uh, teams give up, and if it makes sense that they would do it. We looked at your letters and we compiled all the, we put piles up, all the piles and the teams that had the biggest piles. That's the teams we're going to do. All right. Um, this is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all sports and Teams within those all sports, you'll love Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Also, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show, which is moi, from 3.30 to 5.30 weekdays. Come join the frolic. There will be frolic. If you don't like frolic, you don't want to go. Okay, let's go. There we go. Look at that. Boom. Just like that. To fully has... Okay, this is... Uh, uh, Daily Goldhorn. Great publication, great website. Go check it out. The NHL rumors Canadians trade candidates. One name that has been on the block for weeks is defenseman Ben Chirot. We'll get into that maybe another time. However, others have mentioned over the last several weeks, including but others have been mentioned. Ben Gallagher, which we actually did. You can go check out that in my videos. We did a Ben Gallagher to five teams thing and Tyler to Foley Eric angles who is uh, of Sportsnet, who who covers Montreal a lot does not believe that Gallagher will Gallagher will be moved I agree I did that in the video I said that I really not sure he'll be moved but feels to Foley is a likely candidate and again I agree to Foley has two years left under his contract after this one Hardly fits in the guaranteed to be traded category, say pending unrestricted free agent Ben Chirot, and is considered 29 years old out another six weeks after undergoing hand surgery, which isn't a problem because by the deadline, he's probably under the radar as a trade target. He's a player who helps get you into the playoffs and helps you get through them. Yes, I agree. I mean, we're going to look at Tyler Toffoli's record. 
He only makes $4.25 million a year. That is not bad at all. That is something that, as we see, that is manageable for a lot of teams, especially teams looking for goal scoring. So, ooh, Rangers trading one of their kids. We'll have to do that. I'll have to read that. We'll do another video on that. Be watching out for that. Uh, so, anyways, let's take a look at Tyler Toffoli here and what you would be getting if your team decided to trade for such. He is, like I said, his contract, 4.6, is not too shabby at all. For a guy who, although he, is he having it down there, of course, I, but it's not that down. 17 points in 26 games on a poopty, poopty, poopty Montreal Canadiens team. When last year he had 28 goals in 52 games, that's like over 40 goals a game. Or a game, 40 goals a game, a season. Oh, 40 goals a game, would that be lovely? Uh, but, and 44 points. Before that, he's had, you know, 34, he had a poor season in LA, but he's hovered around the 50 to 60 point ratio and been on the pace of about 20 to 30 goals a season. That is good production for 4.6 million. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of teams out there interested in him so let's look at some of the teams that the fine letters you gave me came up with first colorado avalanche the avalanchers they have i've heard people call them the avalanchers uh they have about 1.5 million in cap space something of that nature let's take a look That's not what I wanted to do. Um, so they would have to give up a little bit in this deal, another contract or what have you. Okay, so, and this is very possible. It's a very possible thing. You have Andre Burakovsky who can play left and right. I think he's a little better on right. Tenorti is a righty. He plays right wing. I've never seen him play left. So... If they're looking to solidify that second line with another goal scorer in between Nazem Kadri, two crazy shooters, good shooters like that, I think it would cost him JT Comfort. And you'll say, well, you know, JT Comfort is having kind of a breakout this year. I agree, but he's only 26. Do you want to gamble that he's going to be able to keep that up? I mean, he hasn't really put up the hugest numbers in his career at 26 years old so far. Um, Toffoli's 29. He's only three years older. See, he's only his best year was 31 points in 1920. So, yeah, he's having a solid year this year. The question is, do they think they can keep it up? I would imagine if Colorado thinks that they JT can keep that up, they would be off the steal. But I get it. Because I Colorado will likely be going for it this year. Why not? Now, the question is, who do you give back? Again, we just talked about JT Comper. I don't even know. You might not even have to give up JT Comper here. And here's why. The big thing they're going to be looking for is Samuel Gerard, which has me believing that if this deal were to happen, I think it would be an off-season deal. Because... I don't think Colorado wants to roll with anybody else in there besides Samuel Gerard. Now, we could look at it this way and say maybe David Savard, who won a cup, could go back. Or Sherratt is another one. Uh, where's Sherratt right now? I know he's injured. Where are you? There you are, Ben Sherratt. He can play left or right. So they could take a big player like Sherratt, who made it to the finals last year, realize that, um, realize that probably they're not going to be able to sign Gerard in the long term. Uh, they've got, or keep Gerard in the long term, I should say. Gerard is, is on, under a really nice contract till 2027. However, they've got 
uh, Devin Taves coming up, Eric Johnson, uh, Bowen Byram's going to have a deal coming up. It's possible they could look at it and say, maybe we're not going to be able to afford him down the road. Anyways, we can get some added scoring and make this deal. Personally, I don't think that's going to happen. I think Sam Gerrard would be off the table on this deal. I, I wanted to bring it up because that's what almost everybody was saying. I think it would be, if they are going to do something like this, and they're not sure about JT Comper's actual consistency, it would be JT Comfer, a first-round pick, and somebody like and and somebody like Martin Kaut or Jordan Gross or Justin Barron maybe. Justin Barron would be somebody that they would be very interested in Montreal. They love their big defensemen. Maybe Justin Barron and JT Comfer plus a late first. They may not even have to go that high for a guy like Toffoli. Possibly. Something like that. Tell me what you think, Colorado fans. It's really hard to say. Um, if you believe that if you believe Toffoli is the 40 goal guy that he was heading to be uh, last year, and they want to make it so they have like an incredible top six, plus their defense is solid, I could see it being a possible destination. However, I also can see Colorado saying, you know what, we're probably good. But I thought I'd throw them in there. Uh, this is like kind of the top five. The next, Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, we also sent Phil Kessel to the Philadelphia Flyers. I did a Phil Kessel trade uh, video just recently. I got just a lamb blasted everywhere. I tried to turn, send Phil Kessel to. Nobody likes Phil, apparently. I think they'd like to Foley more, though. Now, again, as I was talking about with Phil Kessel, personally, my, my personal thinking in this is that Philadelphia should be looking not to be adding players like this. I, I have said for a while, I think that they need to remove assets like Cam Atkinson that they just got in a trade. I'd be trading them. Trading them. Uh, I'm, you know, and I don't know if you could, what you could do with Kevin Hayes, but Giroux, all of these guys, um, they've got enough there to still be competitive, but I really think that they need to actually build this roster, grab draft picks, keep on grabbing draft picks, and then add some free agents afterwards and go for it. But I don't like this roster myself. However, Going by what Chuck Fletcher has been doing, adding Ellis, you know, swinging for the fences for a guy like Rasmus Ristolainen who didn't show it much in Buffalo, and again, making that Cam Atkinson trade, I could see it happening. Now, what is it going to cost them? Well, if I'm Montreal, I want a good young player in return. You know, I'm not, they're not looking, they're looking to rebuild. Or their first round draft pick this year, which I don't know. Do they even have that? Yes. The first round draft pick in 2022. You're going to give up your, give up that? Possibly that would be because Philadelphia looks like they're not going to make the playoffs. That just might be enough. Maybe like Oscar Lindblom to make it work. But I think it's going to cost you something in that area, like Oscar Lindblom in a first, Morgan Frost. Is he really? If you're if if they're going to sign Giroux, and they've got Katuri and Philadelphia's got Katuri and Kevin Hayes, what's the point of keeping Morgan Frost? You might as well put him in this deal, and then you'll get to Foley, uh, who can play. Who's a fairly big guy that can play with Giroux and Farabee or Katuri and Giroux. Then you got Farabee, Hayes, Konechny, or Atkinson. Konechny comes down here and uh, plays with Scott Lawton up the middle or something of that nature. It's They're looking like they have some depth on offense if they plan on going for it. I mean, if that's what you're going to do, if you've made the decision you're not going to do a rebuild, these are the deals you might as well make. Do I think it's the right move? No. If you're going to do it, you, should you do it? Yeah. For sure. Next, uh, Calgary Flames. 
And this is going to be interesting to see if the Calgary Flames decide to do something here. They are having a pretty darn good season. They went through a little bit of a stretch here where it wasn't the best. Their current cap space is $2.6 million. Toffoli makes 4 point some, but you remember that half of that is paid out already. So let's get back here. So half of it's paid out already. So they wouldn't even have to take any money back or give any money back. They could give up their first, uh, which is looks like it's going to be late. So the value would probably be, a, like if you listen to what we've already offered, you got Frost, Limblom at a first or something like that in Philadelphia, a late first is probably not going to do it. I really think that teams are going to be uh, – th this is going to be a seller's market, I think. So I think teams are going to be driven to pick up a guy like Toffoli. Um, I think, again, you know, you got the French-Canadian thing. French-Canadian, Dylan Dubé. Dubé, you know, he, I like him. Good young player, 23 years old. I don't think his offensive upside is that huge, though. Dylan Dubé and a... Dylan Dubé and a first might get you there. I know they're going to be looking for Connor Zari. I'm, I don't know if I want to do that at all. Oh, Yusuf Valimaki. Yusuf Valimaki's asked to be traded already. He, It's going to be a question of Montreal thinks this guy has value or not because since being put down to the minors, he's did all right. So I would say Valimaki, Dubé, it depends on how much they like Valimaki. You might not have to give up the first. I think you would, though. Valimaki, Dubé, and a first. And, okay, you say, well, I'm not giving that up. Really? You're not going to give that up? You have a chance this year. Calgary is looking absolutely fantastic. If, you, if they could add, you think about this for a second. You got to Foley who doesn't mind playing in Canada, obviously, because he, he liked it in Vancouver and wanted to stay, and is in Montreal, and I don't think he wanted to leave there. He signed there. So he's not worried about taxes or anything like this. This is a really great uh, player to add to your lineup. You can move Mangio Pani over to the left. From what I've seen, he plays just as well on the left as he does on the right. Backlund comes back up to the second-line center position into Foley. Manjo, Panny, Backlund, and Toffoli. Not too bad. I'm not a huge fan of Backlund in the second line spot, uh, but he wasn't. He's not much. He's not much worse if worse at all than than Dubé was, and then of course you got Coleman. Sean Monahan moves up with Tyler Pitlick, who Sean Monahan has turned himself into a pretty good two way guy. And they're going to have to try some young players up the middle there. Uh, maybe bring Godden back or just acquire another center to play as well. What do you think, Calgary? I think that would be a really good move for you. Um, that would solidify the second line. I still would like a better center than Backlund, but that second line looks kind of pretty. Tell me what you think, Calgary fans. Toffoli there. Would you do that package? Next, Anaheim Ducks. And this is cap friendly. There's, It's kind of difficult to do this because of all the injured and COVID and all that stuff like that. My thinking is that they're not going to be buyers all that much, but a guy like Toffoli, maybe. They just might do it. Now, the people that wrote in to me with all the letters were offering up guys like Rickard uh, Raquel and Jacob and uh, Jacob Silverberg, and I just that's not. I don't think that's what they're gonna want. Maybe Raquel. You might be able to get away with Raquel, but if you're gonna do this deal, isn't it kind of a lateral move? A 29 year old. The only reason why Anaheim is going to do this is if they truly believe that they can do some damage in the playoffs. 
I think they're going to be looking. I think you could probably go Comtois. They love their French Canadian players. Yes, he struggled a bit in Anaheim, but he's young. He's big. He has put up some points in the past. And I believe he's French Canadian, right? Yes, he's from Quebec. I don't think that would be too difficult to give up a guy like Comtois. Tell me what you think, Anaheim fans. Sam Steele. Comtois, Sam Steele, and uh, some a prospect like Ian Moore. Second round pick in 2020. What's he doing, by the way? Three points in 12 games at Harvard. Not really that great. Something of that nature. A package of prospects and, and uh, young players just might be able to do it. If you look at the package offered, though, I'm not sure even that would do it. And I'm not sure Anaheim. It's not my favorite pick. I, I'm really going to be interested to see at the trade dine trade deadline what Anaheim does my feeling is they pretty much stamp pat and just let these young guys that I was telling you about try to grow into this lineup I, I that's just my feeling right now I don't believe that they believe that they're in there but I got a lot of letters about it so I thought I would do Anaheim finally the New York Islanders and I think this would be the most likely destination for a guy like Toffoli um, now this would assume that they come back and make a make a move this year to to possibly make the playoffs, and I don't think that's impossible. Unlike a lot of Islanders fans that are very unhappy with their record right now, um, which they understandably so, but they they got a lot of games coming up at home. They played that super long road trip. They had COVID issues and all of that. That sort of adversity is the Islanders are known for coming back from stuff like that, right? I think it's a very good chance that even if they aren't going to make the playoffs, I don't think this team is going to rebuild. They may decide to move a guy like Bailey, possibly. But if this deal were to happen, I think Anthony Beauvillier would definitely be what they're looking for. Montreal loves their French-Canadian kids, let's face it. And uh, he's from, you know... Sorel Tracy, Tracy, Quebec. He's from Quebec. He would love it there. I don't think that would only do it. It would probably cost another piece. Um, probably a prospect of some kind. They don't really have all that much prospects. Hopefully you can get away with like a second round pick. But... Maybe you can try to convince them that Josh Bailey is good. I think it might cost to the first after it goes back and forth with everybody. But you get to Foley for the next three years under a crazy good contract. And he's a shooter. Gosh, you need a shooter so bad in this lineup. My gosh, when uh, Brock Nelson comes back and Oliver Wallstrom. So you'd have Lee, Barzal, and Toffoli finally Barzal as somebody to work with on that line. I don't know what Barry how Barry Tross would actually do the lines because he does things fairly different. Kiefer Bellows is looking finally really good. So you can put uh, why do I always forget his name? Brock Nelson back in here, and we we didn't get rid of Josh Bailey, so Josh Bailey can play there. More of a second line center, more where he should be playing. And of course, you still got Calm Palmieri, and uh, that he can play there as well. Do you, I, that's what the Islanders are built on depth, but you finally get a freaking goal scorer on this lineup. That's a true scorer, they, a sniper. Not like, I, 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 I nothing against Saunders Lee, but you know, he gets all his goals from garbage goals. Barzal needs a guy he can flip it to and pick the corner from the hash marks. Toffoli is that guy. So I would really love to see what that would look like if uh, Toffoli was on there. Would you give up Beauvillier? Would you give up a first end Beauvillier for Toffoli? 
That's that's steep, but look what you're getting. And tell me what you think, Islanders fans. Would you do that or not? Okay, that's my full 42. That's all I have to give to you today. This has been great. Tell me what you think about all these trades, boys and girls. I'm going to be sharing it out to the land and come see me on my show, which I'm going to be doing now in about an hour and a half. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you. Okay, bye.